Hey, this is B from Kongs of Rust, and today we're going to do a full in-depth review of my At Games Legends pinball. However, I'll cut straight to the chase and say it right away. This is not a great product out of the box, and I can't recommend it if your goal is only to play the stock 22 games and not do anything else. But it has tons of potential, so if you're willing to spend a little bit of time, a little bit of extra money, it'll definitely be worth your while. So stay tuned and find out more. <laughs> First off, getting the Legends Pinball was no easy task, as At Games set up several pre-order waves with a price point of $599 plus $100 shipping. Recently, a small batch of Legends Pinball machines were available directly through Sam's Club Online at $699 with free shipping plus tax depending on which state you live in. I originally placed a Wave 4 pre-order during National Owners Day for $20, but I jumped at the opportunity to grab the Sam's Club one once it was online. My Legends Pinball arrived in two boxes, and setup was a breeze as I simply added the four legs, the back box, connected the EDP cable, and I was up and running. Check out my initial first thoughts turning on the machine for the first time in this linked video. As you can see, I wasn't originally a fan of the black trim around the main playfield and actually tried to spray paint it silver, and honestly, it didn't look much better. At first, I wanted to match the aluminum metal legs with the trim in the lockdown bar, much like my RK1UP has the chrome trim and chrome legs going, but it didn't look good when I put it all together. So I took some advice from a commenter that recommended chrome vinyl wrap and it definitely looked much better in my opinion. Adding the chrome vinyl was fairly easy and I'll leave a link in the description in case anyone else likes this look too. Overall, the quality of parts are used throughout the cabinet are solid. The metal legs, the 32 inch playfield, the 15.6 inch black glass monitor, the use of real glass are some of the main highlights of the parts used. At $599, the parts alone make it worth the price for a basic entry-level V-pin cab with lots of modding potential. However, I'm not a fan of the overall shape and design of the Legends Pinball Cab. Starting with the proportions of the main cab, and the front is very narrow with the slanted monitor and the shape of the side panels looks shorter than a traditional pin cab. Furthermore, the back box is literally just a square box with no other design elements that looks tiny compared to the main cab. I would have much preferred a traditional back box design with slanted side panels to make the cab look more proportional. The artwork surrounding the cab features art from several Gottlieb tables included with the cab. However, I feel the artwork looks a little disjointed as a multi-cade and I don't have much personal attachment to the table designs. I would have much preferred a singular themed art design rather than a multi-cade, plus I have my own plans to mod the artwork anyways, so it doesn't matter much to me. Also included in the back box is a Legends Pinball Light Up Marquee, which is too bright and actually puts a reflection onto the playfield. Shout out to Buy Stuff Store that had a great idea to use just a piece of paper and some tape to cover the back of the marquee to help dim it and reduce the glare reflection. Lastly, one of the better design elements is the back of the cab with panel access to both the back box and the main cab using an included lock key, but make sure you don't lose it because it only comes with one. I must say when I turned on my Legends Pinball for the first time, I was very impressed with the image quality of the 32 inch 1080p playfield along with the 15.6 inch back glass monitor. All the colors and images displayed vividly with solid black uniformity on all the tables I tested so kudos to At Games for using quality components. The back of the 32 inch playfield monitor shows Splendid Electronics as the manufacturer and the LCD panel is a BOE HV320 FHB N02 with some great specs. To get inside the main cab, start by removing the five screws on each side of the trim and then the front three screws on the lockdown bar. Then, lift the apron section with the D-pad and carefully unplug the five pin connector cable and audio wire connection for the exciters. Carefully slide out the heavy glass frame and place it aside. Then, unscrew the four bolts on each corner of the playfield monitor. Lastly, unplug the 30-pin connection from the monitor to the PCB behind the cab and the two pin wires going into the power supply. And you should now be able to lift the entire monitor out of the frame carefully and place it to the side to access the inside of the cab. Inside the cab, you see a ton of potential space for modding, which I'll get to later on in the video. First off, the buttons used for the flippers, nudge, and front buttons are fairly decent HAP-style clones with clicking microswitches. The play and home buttons on the front use smaller clicking microswitches but feel just as great. The analog plunger is built very solid with great spring tension. Opening the metal housing, you can see the plunger uses a magnetic sensor to produce an analog signal into the encoder on the front of the panel. 
Furthermore, there's a built-in accelerometer attached to the side of the cab which is connected to the same analog sensor as the plunger. Following the wires from the back of the cab, you can see that they run from the power supply in the back all the way to the front where the power switch is located underneath the cab. A nice feature built in is the included USB cable which will soon be used to connect the upcoming Legends pinball controller. All of the button wires go to the encoder in the front of the cab and wired directly into the PCB mounted to the rear of the cab. Now this is a pretty heavy duty PCB with lots of various connections and components which support multiple monitors, USB inputs, HDMI connections, and Wi-Fi. Overall, the Legends Pinball is awesome from a hardware perspective, but it still lacks a little bit in the user experience, which we'll get to next. Now let's get into the user interface. When you power on the cab, you start off by seeing the 22 included tables, which you can navigate using the D-pad on two different pages. Once you've selected a game, you can press the start button on the front, go into a menu and select it one more time to launch the game, or press the red rewind button to exit back to the menu. Across the top, you'll see options for arcade net, bring your own game, BYOG, App Store X, which you can actually use to load up the Zakaria packs, uh, or App Store X, or CoinOps X, and then your settings menu. Here's an example of why the user interface isn't that great on the iGames Legends Pinball. So for you have a start button and a rewind button, for the most part when you press the start is your select and then your rewind is your exit. But here's where it gets funky. When you enter a game afterwards and you go into the menu, you can get into the menu settings by pressing home, but instead of pressing the start button which was select before when you're playing a game, now the select button becomes the rewind button. So you still use this to navigate, but if I wanted to go into settings, I can't hit the start button, which I was using before. I now have to use the, the rewind button, which was my back button previously to now confirm everything once you're in game. This is just funky user interface design that isn't intuitive for a brand new user. And it took me a little while to get used to. Here's another example of funky UI experience. When you buy the Zakaria tables here, you can select a table here, but when you select it, all you can do is really just see information about the table itself. You have to purchase it from the store and then you have to redeem a code. But when you select the pack, the only options here are start and rewind, not in the actual interface itself when you're selecting it. Um, so I've already downloaded everything, but in order to actually redeem a code, you have to be on this version of the screen and then hit the home button to actually redeem a code for the actual thing. So this is another example of it could have been very much simplified and it, see again at start is the select button. Um, if you went into the menu itself to actually look at the game, you should have the redeem code option on this tab right here. And again, it's just one of those really funky UI experiences that uh, isn't optimized and isn't user friendly when you're first starting this up. When I booted up one of the 22 classic Gottlieb tables for the first time, I was amped to see how the haptic feedback worked with the exciters. And unfortunately, I was extremely disappointed with the feel of the exciters rumpling under the Plastic Legends pinball apron. And I was definitely joking around when I felt like the vibration almost felt like a soft fart. <laughs> and it doesn't replace the physical sound and feel of a solenoid haptic, unfortunately. You can see lifting up the apron how small these exciters are and while you may be able to adjust the haptic feedback volume in the settings, they just felt terrible with the application on the stock 22 games and you had to place your hands on the apron in order to feel them at all. Speaking of gameplay, when I first got the cab, I definitely noticed a half second delay on the tables that you can clearly hear when you press the button, there's a delay on the flipper sound. I am happy to report that At Games released a recent patch that fixed the audio delay issue as seen here, but the haptics don't feel quite right and the volume is much louder than it was before, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. Out of the box, the accelerometer for physically nudging the table needs to be calibrated. To find the calibration menu, you must enter a game, open a menu, go to the settings, and navigate to page 4 to find the calibration tool. Again, this is another example of funky user interface. However, once you calibrate it, I was pleasantly surprised at the sensitivity of the accelerometer working great when moving the table. The inclusion of the side nudge buttons is also fantastic to give players options on how they prefer to play. Going back to the in-game options menu, there's tons of little tweaks you can make to customize your gameplay experience from audio to haptic feedback, but one of the neat options is the display mode, which you can change the view of the table from cabinet mode to classic mode. In this mode, the view camera pans out to see the entire table and then zooms in in certain areas when you play, like in Black Hole here. I prefer the standard cabinet mode, but this is a cool option for those that want to try something new with their tables after playing for a while. 
Although I'm happier with the improved gameplay, it definitely ruined my initial experience and the funky UI is just something I can't get over. So I really can't recommend getting the Legends Pinball to only play the stock titles if you had no plans to do anything else with it. I'm not sure you'd be completely satisfied with it. But the whole point about At Games Legends is that it's a connected gaming device where you can get updates, you can see improvements, and you have the ability to add more things. So there's lots of potential and let's get into all the potential for adding new things and new games. Official Zakaria pinball tables are available on the At Games eStore for purchase in four different bundles at $50 each. However, these tables do go on sale often and were available half price during National Owners Day in February and recently $35 each a few weeks ago. Adding more official pinball tables from Zakaria requires your first additional accessory, a USB drive. I recommend getting one of these 128GB low-profile thumb drives that will be more than plenty to download the official packs and even potentially run CoinOps X on future mods. I recommend the partition method of splitting your drive into two partitions, one as a FAT32 16GB drive and the rest of the drive as an EX FAT format with the remainder of the storage. Once you plug in your USB, go to the Settings tab on the second page bottom left hand side, Flash Drive X, and format the drive. Follow the prompts and instructions to format the first partition, and then mount the drive to your At Games Legends. Next, go to the App Store X tab and you can see the Zakaria packs. So to pick the pack that you've purchased and press the Home button to enter the redemption code. Once you've redeemed your code, you can select the actual pack you've purchased, go to the Install button, and it's going to download the pack, install it. Once it's all done, you should be able to go to your tables menu and see all the added games to your game list. Here's some sample gameplay of one of the Zakaria tables, Black Belt, which runs much more smoothly than the stock Gottlieb tables. Everything is way more optimized, the ball animations are great, the flippers don't have the delay lag, and the haptics feel a little bit better, but it's still rumbly underneath the plastic. One of the biggest selling points of the Legends Pinball is its modding potential. With that same USB drive you used earlier, you can bring your own game using the add-on X feature and loading .uce files. You can find UCE files in various sauce builds, or you can make your own and create your own playlist. These files allow you to play various ROMs directly onto your Legends machine through the add-on X feature, like Miss Pac-Man. Check out this gameplay. However, you are limited playing games with the stock controls, but fortunately there's a dedicated Legends pinball controller coming out very soon that you can replace the entire apron of your pinball cab. Alternatively, you can use any Bluetooth controller like the Legends Gamer Pro Connect it, and then you can play any games you want using those controls instead. You can also load up the Coin Ops X feature for a very nice visual front end interface for your games as well. Eventually, I'll be working on my own vertical only playlist once I get my Legends pinball controller, but this is a super cool feature that I really like. Using the HDMI port near the bottom of the back glass allows you to switch the main play field to any other HDMI device, including a PC. By using an EDP to HDMI adapter, you can also add a second HDMI cable from your PC into the back glass, and then you're set to run additional pinball tables using VPX, Pinball FX3, and more. Lastly, by using the proper USB cable, you can connect your Legends pinball to your PC using the OTG mode and have the buttons, D-pad, and plunger recognized as a gamepad controller in Windows. If you're having trouble with OTG mode, you can also connect the Legends Pinball Controller to your PC via Bluetooth using the Wireless Controller Deck mode in Settings. From here, the sky's the limit in terms of adding more pinball tables, and I highly recommend Nailbuster's Baller Installer to run Pinup Popper as your front end, which gets you the basic setup you need to run VPX, Pinball FX3, Future Pinball, and more. Setting up VPIN tables definitely takes a lot of work and hope to have future tutorials on my setup once I finish adding a third screen into my back glass on a future mod. As you saw earlier, there's also tons of space inside the cab to add some additional haptic feedback. There's potential to add surround sound feedback using exciters, a bass shaker, and a couple of different amps. And I'm excited about this cross section, which is perfect to add solenoid feedback using contactors for feedback on my PC pinball tables. Now adding surround sound feedback or solenoids may not work directly with the stock tables, but if you're planning to add pinball tables through a PC, I highly recommend doing these haptic upgrades as it's definitely going to make the most out of your build. Thanks for watching the review. So final thoughts on the At Games Legends pinball. Is it worth it? Well, that really depends on you. If you had no plans to mod it and we're only going to play it for the stock 22 godly tables, 
I still don't think I can recommend it because the haptic feedback and the exciters didn't feel great. The user interface is really weird. And again, the optimization on those tables weren't great. Even though they fixed it with the auto delay, there still can be some improvement down the line. So there's hope. Again, overall, the shape of the cab itself, the back box, the slants and everything, you know, you can get over that. But if you had some plans to, to mod it, you had the resources and desire to add the USB a controller, a PC so you can run the VPX games. Um, I am a name brand kind of guy and I love playing pinball tables that I recognize. So running VPX is a huge deal for me and I have big plans to mod this. So stay tuned to the channel as I have plans to mod the entire back glass, add in a bigger monitor to be able to add a DMD. I'm going to be adding contactors inside, surround sound feedback. I had a lot of big plans for this cab. So thanks for watching the video. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you do, leave a thumbs up on your way out. Consider subscribing to the channel and let's keep taking it to the next level. Thanks for watching. Bye.